power of Jesus. The time of Jesus. Jesus refers to his hour at least 12 times in the Gospel of John. 12 times. At times he said, my hour has not yet come. And another time he will say, because this is the hour. The hour that Jesus is referring to is the time of fulfillment of God's will. It is the hour of his crucifixion. And the crucifixion leads him to his death. And the death of Jesus leads him to his glorification. For the Gospel of John, or for John, the hour of the cross is already the hour of victory. It is already what he was thirsting for. And in the Synopsy Gospel, he will say, it is finished. It is accomplished. It is consummated. In fact, what he was sent for, the hour of the Father, has now been fulfilled when he is in the cross. But throughout his ministry, this hour, Jesus did not want to rush this hour. He wanted to leave this hour with humility, not anticipating it, not rushing anything. What hour are you in? What hour do you find yourself in? There is a tension between what God wants us to be, what God wants us to achieve, and the time that needs to take. The time of waiting. The time of growth. The time of progression towards what God wants to do with my life. Everything, according to the book of Ecclesiastes, has time. Everything has a season. And everything has to follow according to the season. In the first reading, Jeremiah, the prophet in chapter 31, shows us how the hour of God is unfolded in the lives of the children of Israel. He says, this is now the time when I'm going to fulfill and accomplish in the house of Israel a new covenant. A time of a new covenant. The time where the covenant with my people is no longer going to be written on a stone or written in an external book. But a time where everyone will be able to understand and to comprehend the mystery of love, God's love. And that's the time he is going to write that of his words, of his commandments. And that's the time he's going to make his coven covenant with men's hearts, write his covenant in each and every person's hearts so that everyone will be able to approach God, to know what is right, 
and to know what is wrong. To know when they are lost and to know when they are in a good relationship with God. To know when they are in good terms with the community and when they are not. Because it is written in their conscience. That is the time. And that took some time. Is a care is going to take up the, the, the same topic. Then God is going to speak to his children. I will take from their hearts a heart of stone and I will put in them a heart of flesh. I will put within you my spirit. This time is going to happen. And prophet Joel, which is a minor prophet, will prophesy this in the end of the Old Testament to see the fulfillment of God's words. And that time will come when every flesh will receive his spirit. Old men will dream dreams and young maidens will see visions. This is the time that the Spirit will come and we see that already on Mount Sinai, the, the, the tongues of fire coming up, but also, more importantly, in the Acts of the Apostles will the fulfillment with Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit came, now the people could know God through the, the power of the Holy Spirit. The hour of Jesus is an important hour. This is the hour that calls us to meditate on our own salvation. He was so patient to see this happening and being fulfilled in his life. We need to understand clearly that God's has a calendar for each and every one of us. In everyone's life, there is a specific time and timing. When we look at the world, there are different time zones in various places. The sun rises differently according to the time zones. Right now, it is already night in the other side of Africa. Right now, in some spaces in, in, our, in the United States, there are still three hours backward. Others are one hour forward. And we are not going to expect the sun as it rises in another country to rise here when, we, when it will going to be midnight. This calls to patience. The hour of Jesus, that is saying, my hour has not yet come. My hour had not yet come. Calls us to be patient with God in his shadow as he plans in our lives. I might be in trouble right now, but I'm not going to be in trouble forever. I might be sick right now, but I'm not going to be sick forever. I might fail now, but that, that doesn't make me a failure. I might be in another situation right now. This is only one time zone at a different time. God's plan and God's will should definitely unfold at the appointed time. Each and every one of us has his own calendars. You should not leave your time according to the calendars of another person. Jesus humbly respected the time of God, his Father. Jesus acknowledged that time. For us to be happy, 
we must also try as much as possible to pray as advised in the letter to the Hebrews today. Pray, but also to remain obedient so that Jesus may be indeed the cause and the source of our salvation. When obedient to the hour and the time of God, then we become like the grain of wheat that falls and that takes that time to die first and then to sprung out and to, to have leaves and later on to grow fruits. Dying becomes therefore a process of fruitfulness. To become fruitful, we all need to learn to die each and every day. In a situation of marriage, the spouses need to learn to die in their, in their habits in order to give room to peace. They need to die and grow patience, patiently in order to mature in their love. In a context of a parish, we also need to give each other time, patiently growing with one another, holding each, other, each other's hands and moving towards the glory of Easter as a family. The hour of Christ is indeed the hour of glorification, not only for him, but indeed for us. Every time we learn to die in ourselves, to give a room for God to become the right calendar and the right time for us, we become the most happiest people in our lives. And that's what we are looking for, to be happy. To be happy. Let's therefore acknowledge. Let's therefore learn to recognize through prayers, through discernment, through the moments of silence, the hour of God in our lives. May the Blessed Virgin Mary help us today to acknowledge, to pray, to learn, to obey the hour in which we find ourselves. Every hour is important. It depends on how you deal, how you accept, and how you actually involve God into that hour that you find yourselves. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.